Hey there, my name is Cheebs, and I do a lot of solo hiking, camping, and backpacking. And I film it all and share it here with you on my channel. In this video, I venture to the mountains of Colorado to take a solo backpacking trip in almost freezing temperatures. If you like this video, be sure to leave a thumbs up, comment, and subscribe. Enjoy! All right, we are off. So this trail is about 2.8 miles up, but in those 2.8 miles, you will gain about 2,500 feet of elevation. So this trail is no joke. I already had to take the jacket off, working up a sweat. It's my music that's playing. I play music when I walk on the trail, so I'm not sneaking up on anything I don't want to sneak up on. This aspen grove is just stunning. And in the fall, when they all change, it's gonna be golden bright yellow. All of these trees, it'll just be a sea of yellow. And if you didn't know, fun fact, aspen groves are one whole organism. It's just, one large system interconnected with the roots. So, fun fact, pretty cool. Another thing, it is the start of hunting season here in Colorado, muzzleloader season. And I think archery as well, I'm not sure about that one, but that's for hunting elk and I believe mule deer. So, I did see a couple of hunters parked at the trailhead. However, I'm sure that they're aware that this is a pretty frequented trail and um, hopefully they're not gonna be hunting right next to a trail that's pretty busy. But just something to keep in mind. You know, you don't wanna wear neutral colors. Something bright, like this white shirt I'm wearing, or even better if you have it, orange, because hunting accidents do happen and it's just something to be mindful of. I hear a pretty loud water source off to my left. And I don't know if it's just pretty high CFS from the rain we've been getting, or if it's like a waterfall that's usually there or something. I have no idea. But hopefully we can get a, a peek at it. This is beautiful. Nice little pine grove in there. Super pretty. But we continue up and onward. Wow. This is just gorgeous. Absolutely stunning. Looks like it might rain here. Some clouds above me. Getting a little dark, not too bad, but it doesn't look like it's enough that I'd need to put my rain jacket on or anything. These are juniper berries from a juniper bush. Check out this massive rock slide behind me. I don't know if that's from an avalanche. I'm betting it is, or if it's just a regular old rock slide. But this is definitely avalanche territory, so I'm willing to bet it was that. Took my bear spray off my pack, holding it in my hand here. And the reason for that is I was hiking down through all of that little shrubbery and bushes. And if those are berry producing bushes, bears definitely like to hide there. It's good coverage for them. So 
and it's dense. So the chances of you surprising it or it surprising you a little bit higher. So just for my peace of mind, figured walking through that, I just have my bear spray in my hand. Now it's just nothing but switchbacks. Back and forth, back and forth. Really, really gaining that elevation now. Want to be careful though. <laughs> One wrong step and I'm just gonna gain momentum and tumble down this. So that's why it's also good to stop and take breaks so you're not feeling dizzy, lightheaded, all that good stuff. Kind of seeing the light at the end of the tunnel there those peaks that is where we are heading oh look at this rock field there is you definitely can't see it but there is a hole in the side of that cliff face over there and it looks like a, a little den for something to live in which is pretty neat looks like a cozy space i think i'd live there too <laughs> Whew. Now it's getting quiet. When you get further away from that water source, it is just dead silent out here. No noise pollution whatsoever. You truly feel like you are in the back country. I'm looking around to see if I can see any deer or I mean even birds and man, I just don't see anything. So far I've passed about three other people on this trail. The, the parking lot was full when I got here, so I, I don't know if there are other campers up there. I highly doubt it, because I don't think anyone's gonna be camping <laughs> this late in the season uh, when it's this cold, except for me, apparently. Just ahead of me, I see a couple of chipmunks. I see a pika, which is like, ooh, which is like kind of a chipmunk and you tend to only really see them at higher elevations like this. Ooh, I just saw a bird of prey fly across, either like probably a hawk. Had a big wing wingspan. Ooh. There are just so many rock fields on this trail from past mudslides or uh, avalanches. I'm gonna assume avalanche, but I guess I don't really know. But it's just barren rock fields. I see the end of the hike and oh my gosh, when I tell you I'm really gonna have to dig deep for this one. Like Jeff Propst in Survivor says, you gotta dig deep. You can't see them now but they are some of, <laughs> I think those are the worst switchbacks I have ever seen. It looks like you're gonna be scaling a literal cliff. So, oh man, right at the end of the hike. <sighs> it's worth it though. This is part of the experience. I chose to do this. up that. Y'all, I think I'm about to climb a mountain with half of my body weight on my back right now. <laughs> oh my. All right. Well, the name of the game here is nice and slow. We don't push it so we don't lose our footing and have a nasty fall. Ay, ay, ay. All right. Let's do this. Got this. I'm gonna go to the end of this and take like a five minute break and start the journey up. 
I don't know if you can see, but down there are a couple of yellow-bellied marmots. I don't think this thing can zoom that far, but they're right down in there. I just saw one of, there's two of them. I saw one of them swish their tail around a little bit. Okay, I have to say, that was not as bad as I thought it was gonna be. Um, for some reason I thought they went up a lot higher, um, but it was only like four or five times back and forth. I mean, don't get me wrong, it was hard, but not as bad as I thought. Whew. Can't you tell by how freaking winded I am? Oh my. I think I've officially passed everybody that was parked at the parking lot. Um, judging by how many cars were there. So I think it's just me now. I think I have this place on myself. Hi. Oh, were you fishing? No, I'm looking Oh, are you studying? I just passed someone who is working for the uh, forest ranger service and she had a big, big net. So my initial thought was, oh, are you fishing? <laughs> but no, she actually is collecting bumblebees um, to survey the population. Um, however, she said she didn't find too many bumblebees because there are just no flowers right now. Oh, man, I think I'm there. I'm literally right there. Nice little water source here. Um, Wait, which I, I actually think I crossed this, now that I'm looking at it. Um, uh, yeah, yeah, we're doing it. But I don't see where else the trail goes. <laughs> Looks like there are a bunch of different little paths all throughout here which um is for backpacking i would imagine any one of these paths you take you can find a campsite at the end of it <laughs> i've actually done it i made it oh my goodness <sighs> yo hi I'm running out of energy. That was tough. That'd be a hard hike without a backpack. I'm gonna go to the lake. I'm gonna drop pack. Although, I do have a feeling I'm gonna be camping back there. Not up here, but just cause it's more exposed and it'll be cold. Oh my gosh. It is so quiet. Oh my. This is incredible. All right, I've gone ahead and dropped my pack. Um, I am truly the only person up here. There's no one else up here. So I am probably by myself there's probably not another person around for a good three miles at least, which is kind of weird to think about. I'm unhooking my bear spray, putting it on my pants, making sure the, the top portion's not constrained at all. And you know what? I'm feeling a little chilly because I was sweating, so my shirt was wet, and now I'm up here, high altitude, so starting to get cold. I'm gonna put my puffy on. So I think I've already decided on my campsite for the evening and it was ways back away. But I think I'm just gonna chill here and enjoy the views for a little bit. Okay, it's cold by the lake and I hear thunder rolling in, so I'm gonna go back up and 
pick out my campsite. Closer to the tree line. There's a nice little spot here. Um, you know what, I think this might be my dinner spot, if anything. Hello. Yes, this is the campsite for the night. You got some tree coverage here. Um, looks like there's even like a fire ring, which I'm shocked because I don't think you're allowed to make fires. Um, and <laughs> a little bench for sitting. That'll be nice. And most importantly, it is right next to a running water source. Now, I could get my water from the lake and camp by the lake, but a couple of reasons why I don't want to do that. Looks like some rain is rolling in, and if by chance that rain system turns into a thunderstorm system, uh, there's not a lot of coverage for me, and I'm super exposed up there. Also, it's going to be very, very cold. So if the wind decides to pick up, I'm, I'm going to be exposed. So amongst these trees gives a nice little windshield in all directions. Um, and yeah, I just feel good about this one. I got to drop pack though. Um, I'm tired. <laughs> This is nice. It's really nice. But real quick, before I fully decide if this is where I want to sleep tonight, I'm just going to walk around the perimeter of the camp and see if I see, I don't know, any bear scat. Um, but I, the only scat I've seen on this whole trail has been what I believe to be coyote poop, but even that um, could have been dog poop. So. It's hard to tell the difference. This place is gorgeous. It's just absolutely beautiful. Yeah, I'm honestly, I haven't even seen moose scat, which I'm shocked. This looks like a, it'd be a moose haven but no scat. So I feel pretty confident about making this home for the night. Got a little wildlife encounter over here. What's up, buddy? <laughs> Someone's dog just came running through the campsite. Oh, yep. Better go find mom. <laughs> oh man, once you stop moving and your blood stops pumping, it gets chilly. I'm actually going to put my garbage bag over my backpack while I leave it in case it rains while I'm gone so, you know, my sleeping bag and stuff doesn't get wet. Oh man, I am just absolutely tuckered out. I cannot wait for this meal. I am so very excited. There's that sun. Yeah, that feels real nice. I put way too much water in. Um, so basically I'm eating Alfredo and chicken soup. I'm sure it'll be tasty enough. I mean, it's calories at the end of the day. That's really all that matters, but I'm a good cook, just not in the back country apparently. Maybe I should have stuck to the backpacking meals. All right, bon appetit. Let's see how it is. That tastes amazing. And I don't know if it's because I'm starving. Um, after hiking all day. 
but that is good. All right, I'm gonna fill up my Nalgene, set up camp, and honestly, turn in for the night. I'm tired. You want to make sure you pump all the excess water out of this so it doesn't freeze in the middle of the night. Okay, so little change of plans. The area I was at I think was way too high up and the wind started kicking up and it just felt really cold. And it's probably me just being like extra cautious or extra anxious, but I decided it was worth it to hike lower into the tree line for even better coverage. So I'm in a much more wooded area now. Uh, found a really good, nice flat spot that someone has definitely camped before. This is the nice thing about this area is once you get up to the lake, and even before that, there are just so many trails off to the side uh, that go to camping spots. So it's like a pretty, pretty popular area for backpacking, which makes me feel comfortable, but <laughs> I am the only person up here tonight, to my knowledge. So yeah, let's go ahead and get the tent set up because I'm, I'm tired and I just wanna lay down and, and read my book, to be honest. I will say the only downside of this campsite is we are further away from the water source. And <laughs> this might sound silly, but a, a part of me was kind of attached to being really close to the water source because it's a constant white noise. And when I'm backpacking by myself, any any bump in the night freaks me out so it was kind of i mean i can still hear it from here um it's just not like right next to me like it was but i do think i have enough water for tonight i mean so like that's the thing with backpacking there, there's so many variables there's like well there's this aspect there's that aspect and it's just whatever is a priority to you um, as long as you feel like you are camping in a place where you feel safe and comfortable, um, then you just need to like figure out what your priorities are. And I decided tonight that my priorities are being as warm as I can possibly be rather than as mentally comfortable as I can possibly be, if that makes sense. It was kind of like physical comfort versus mental comfort. And I just, like, my thought process was, if I'm physically comfortable, the mental stuff might be easier to work through. Who knows? I don't know. Let's get this tent set up. So we have a little bit of an uh-oh situation. I think I, I ripped my entire bag apart and I seem to be missing the other bag for my tent, which contains my stakes. And I think I was just in a rush or I might have dropped it somewhere because I didn't pack the bag well Because I'm like, oh, I'm just gonna go down like a little bit not very far So I, I definitely dropped them somewhere. I think or I left them at the campsite, but I don't I don't think I did that because I Remember seeing them so vividly But at this point I'm losing light a little bit too quickly to go look for them I don't feel comfortable doing that by myself I'll look for them in the morning and hope that they're still there uh, because, you know, I, I still just don't want to, I don't want to litter. Um, but for the time being, the stakes are really important for keeping my tent taut, which really helps with insulation and, and potential rain. So I, we're going to use rocks, heavy rocks. Thankfully, it's not like the structure of the tent. As embarrassing as this is to admit, this happens. You know, that's the nature of adventure. Stuff can and will go wrong. All right, let's get this tent set up. Well, good to know that they're not lost. They were just hidden in the dark, deep corners 
off my backpack, but I'm not, I'm not gonna restake it. The rocks will do just fine, but I'm so happy I didn't lose them. <laughs> I just didn't take the extra five minutes to check my backpack and empty all of it out because I am truly so tired. <laughs> I've got this inflated and I'm gonna sleep with my head up here because it's higher up here and um, I like to sleep with my head higher. And then I have, this is definitely a luxury item and it is a little bit heavy, but this is the Thermolite Fabric Reactor C to Summit brand. So basically what it is, it's a sleeping bag liner which will help with these temperatures that are gonna get close to freezing tonight. So. All right, there we go. And we have the inside of the tent made up for the most part. Let's go ahead and hide our bear canister. So two things about brushing your teeth. Um, it's important to use biodegradable toothpaste and also it's really important to brush your teeth away from your campsite because it is scented. And yes, bears can smell that and they will be nosy about it. Actually, before I hide my bear bag, I am going to change into different clothes um, because I did end up cooking in these clothes. So I'm gonna go ahead and put my PJs on and then store the clothes that I cooked and ate in with the bear canister. It's too quiet up here. Anything, anything that makes a noise, it's loud and you can hear it. Uh, I should have brought a headlamp for this. So yeah, how you hide a bear canister or a bear bag. Well, we'll go with bear canister because a bear bag is a little more intricate. But bear canister, basically you just want to put it 100 yards, at least 100 yards away from your campsite and at least 100 yards away from the place you cooked. So. Um, they call it the triangle method. And what I like to do personally with my bear canister is I like to try to like find a rock or um, some kind of shrubbery to hide it in without disrupting the environment. So basically what I've done right here is I found um, a gathering of a bunch of trees and it's, it's pretty dense. So I'm gonna go ahead and put it in there. I don't know if you can see, but oof, that sun sets fast. One last thing I'm gonna do before bed is I'm going to take my water bottle and what water is in here, I'm going to heat it up and boil it and then put it back in here and use my hot water bottle as a heat source. And honestly, this is one of my favorite backcountry tricks because sometimes the heat of the water bottle lasts all night long. Oh, so I'm gonna go ahead and put this right in my sleeping bag right away. Make sure it's nice and dry before I do that though. Okay. All right, I am all cozied in my tent. It is time for bed. I don't even know if I'm gonna try to read before bed. I might, but I'm, I'm just, I'm ready. I'm ready to hit the hay. So I'm gonna do that and I will see you all in the morning. Good night. Good morning. We made it through the night. <sighs> I, did not sleep well. Every little bump in the night woke me up. I think a lot of people have this idea that I don't have any fear or anxiety when I do this, which is so not true. I have so much fear and anxiety when I do this, but I wanna do it. So I just do it scared. Oh, and what I'm scared of right now is getting out of this sleeping bag because it is so warm. <laughs> I just want to sleep a couple of more hours, but we got to get going. Got to get up, eat breakfast, pack up camp, and head back down. My body is so sore from yesterday. <laughs> just tossing and turning through the night. I can, I can really feel it this morning, so. This hike down, good thing, I'm, well, 
it's all downhill, which is a good thing because relatively it's easier than going up, but sometimes going down, especially those steep switchbacks, uh, it's really hard on the joints, so it's still going to be a challenge. I don't know how warm the sleeping bag would have been last night without that heated water bottle, but oh, wow. That really, really helped. And I mean, it stayed, it stayed warm until this morning. Like this morning, I don't think, I kind of lost it in the sleeping bag, but um, I don't think it's still, I don't think it's still warm, but it kept me, it kept me nice and toasty. There was one point where I was a little too hot and I had to put my hands out of the sleeping bag. But it's time to get up. We have a whole day ahead of us. <laughs> Slowly but surely, we're making our way out of this sleeping bag. I'm molting into a beautiful butterfly. Good morning, sunshine. The earth says hello. Found a bear box. Doesn't look like any bears tried to get into it in the middle of the night, which is good. Having a little, a little trouble opening it this morning because it's cold and I'm cold, so my fingers aren't working well. So I just grabbed a stick. And if you don't know how a bear box works, basically there are these teeth along the top, and you have to push them past this little lip. And my fingers just are not working for that this morning, so just gotta. A stick off the ground to help to help push that so if you ever find yourself in the same predicament a little stick works really well for that my GoPro battery is gonna die soon note to self three GoPro batteries uh, does not seem to be enough so we got to bring more next time so I'm just gonna try to do this breakfast thing really fast I'm not gonna be able to show you all the details of it but this is what we have for breakfast I did splurge and get a backpacking meal these are about $10, which is so expensive. Uh, you can't just dehydrate food at home yourself if you have a dehydrator or if you want to take the time to do that. But yeah, we're gonna go ahead and make this really quick. I'm so excited. Also, a little luxury item I brought, hot sauce. <laughs> oh, my body just does not want to get moving this morning. It is cold. I am sore. So I've gone ahead and made my breakfast and my coffee. This is what breakfast looks like. Oh, and it smells just amazing. It smells like I stepped right into a, a little breakfast shop. And then I've got my coffee as well. And I'm going to chow down on this. And then it's time to break down camp, pack back up and head down the trail back to our car, back to home to see my dog. I've got food in my belly, I've got coffee in my system, and I'm all packed up. Now it's time to hit the trail and head back home. Hey, thanks so much for watching my video. If you liked that content, be sure to share, like, subscribe, and comment on the video. It really supports the channel, and I very much so appreciate it. And I will see you all in the next video.